Hello, everyone. I am Sizi Xiangwei from University of Virginia. It is a great honor for me today to introduce our work, Better Learning Over Noisy Channels, with you. This work is co-authored by Professor Tongshen, also at the University of Virginia. We will first begin with the system model and give a convergence analysis of federated learning over noisy channels. Then we will move on to a design example with experiment results. Finally, we will give a brief summary as the conclusion. Federated learning has been proposed as a convincing technology, which allows the server to obtain the global machine learning model via distributed local data sets and at the same time protect users' privacy. Let's consider a wireless federated learning systems as shown in this figure, where total N clients are involved for the federated learning tasks. Each client has its own non-IID local data set, Dn, and the local loss function of each client is Fn. The global loss function of federated learning task is the weighted sum of the local loss function according to the size of the local data set. The purpose of federated learning is to obtain a global model W star, which minimizes the global loss function. We assume that at each communication round, K random selected user will be involved in the federated learning. A typical federated learning pipeline is shown in this figure. The server will first broadcast the global model, which obtained from the previous communication round to the K involved clients. After each client receives the global model, they will use it as the initial point and run the local mini batch SGD on the local data set. After they run the mini batch SGD for e epochs, they will obtain their own local model. And they, up, they upload this local model to the server. When the server obtains all of the local model, it will average them and obtain the new global model. This kind of procedure will go continuously until the global model at the server come into convergence. Most of the previous work of federated learning do not take the communication errors in this uplink and downlink communications into consideration. And only a few of the work consider the communication errors of the uplink communications. And it is in our work that at the first time, both uplink and downlink communication errors are taken into consideration simultaneously. This figure shows the federated learning pipeline over noisy channels. The server first broadcasts the global model WT-1 to K clients. However, due to the existence of the downlink noise, each client will receive a noisy version of the global model and use it as the initial point for the local SGD. After they obtain their own local model, they will upload them in the noisy channel and the server will receive the noisy version of the local model and use them to make the average to obtain the global model. To better evaluate the federated learning in noisy channels, we define three kinds of SNR here. The first one is the local SNR, which represents the SNR of the global model received at each client. And the second one is the SNR at the server, which represents the SNR of the local model received at the server. And the third one is the SNR of the global model, which represents the SNR of the global model at the server after the aggregation. To theoretically analyze the convergence of federated learning over noisy channels, we first need to make four assumptions on local loss function. These four assumptions are widely accepted in the state of art papers. We assume that all of the local loss function is L smooth and mu strongly convex and have bounded wires for mini batch SGD and have uniformly bounded gradients. Under these four assumptions, we prove that 
when using a this machine learning rate and adopting a SNR control policy that scales effective noise power at a rate of one over T square, federated learning can convergence at a rate of one over T with non-ID data set and partial client participations. This theorem shows that to treat each communication round of federated federated learning equally under a transmitted power budget T may be not the optimal solution for the transmitted power allocation. Instead, we need to allocate the transmitted power at a rate of T square. Now we take the analog aggregation as an example. The original analog aggregation used channel inversion rule which compact the channel fading so that all of the local model would aggregate it automatically at the server. However, except the inference of channel inversion rule, the original analog aggregation used equal transmitted power for each of the communication round of federated learning. Inspired by the results from the previous theorem, we improve the analog aggregation by allocating the transmitted power at a rate of T square. The extensive experiment results have shown the advantage of the English power allocation scheme. We first see the experiment results on MINIST dataset. In IID dataset, the equal power allocation scheme achieves 90.5 percentage test accuracy, and the increased power allocation scheme achieves 99.1 percent test accuracy. And in non-ID data case, the equal power allocation scheme achieves 98.4 percentage test accuracy, and the increased power allocation scheme achieves 99 percentage test accuracy. This kind of advantage become more significant in more challenging data sets. In CIFAR 10 data sets, the equal power allocation scheme achieves 71.7 percentage test accuracy, while the increased power allocation schemes achieves 78.9 percentage test accuracy in IID data set case. And in non-IID data set case, the equal power allocation scheme only achieves 78.7 test accuracy of the baseline, while the increased power allocation scheme achieves 94.2 test, 94.2 percentage test accuracy of the baseline. And in Shakespeare data set, the equal power allocation scheme achieves 52.9 percentage test accuracy, and the increased power allocation scheme achieves 57.8 percentage test accuracy, which is the same as the noise-free case. And in non-ID case, the increased power allocation scheme achieves 56.4 percentage test accuracy, which is 2% higher than the equal power allocation scheme. From all of the experiment results, we can see that the increased power allocation scheme achieves higher test accuracy and lower training loss than the equal power allocation schemes under different data sets in both IID and non-ID data settings. As in close, I would like to make a brief conclusion. We first investigate the federated learning over noisy channels under both uplink and downlink communication errors. And we prove that the same one over T convergence rate and the perfect communications can be achieved if downlink and uplink SNRs are controlled as T square over noisy channels. We then propose and transmit power control policy for the analog aggregation and extensive experimental results shows that the advantage of the proposed schemes.
Okay, it is very nice to have all of you here. Thank you for your time.